So in the previous episode, I showed you uh, how you can implement uh, Electropoly uh, make versus buy model. That was uh, Electropoly V1 version 1. Uh, but I want to show you an alternative way of implementing this model in Excel. And as you can guess, um, there are many ways of uh, implementing, many ways of organizing the model in Excel as long as all the formulas are calculated correctly and uh, entered in the solver add-in. So in this case I want to organize the data slightly differently and I want to um, uh, put them in a format that is uh, quite close to a standard format for uh, linear programming problems. So in, in, this, in this format what we have is we have one line of variables uh, and then we have one line for the objective and one line for each constraint. And so in this example, because I have uh, here six variables, three M I MIs and three BIs, I'm going to just list them M1, M2, M3, B1, B2, B3. And, uh, and, and uh, of course these are just uh, uh, descriptions, labels. Uh, I will put the variables here below. So here is my variables, make and buy variables. I put I will put here that this is the number of units. Um, and then uh, I will define the objective function in the next line. The objective function here is of course cost in dollars, right? It is a total cost, but I will have unit costs here too. And I will just enter cost coefficients, right? Cost parameters for the objective here in one line. They're just exactly the same as those numbers here in the objective. So they are 50, 83, 130, 61, 97 and 145. And then I can of course e enter here a total value, in this case a total value for the cost will be some product. I will select the six parameters, comma, and I will select the six variables and also after selecting the variables I'm going to press F4 to add the, uh, the absolute reference to fix the reference for the future copying of the formula. So in this case right, I'm computing now the total cost for this problem. Um, let me mark the formula with the color that I told you I will be using for any formulas Okay, and let us now test the, 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 the model. Let's say I will put here 1 and I'll see is the profit, uh, to sorry, total cost 83 as it is. If I put 2, it is going to be 2 times. If I add additional uh, 1 unit to buy, plus 61 to this, it is correctly ca computed. It is 227. You can check this. So let's leave these numbers. Now remember we, we don't need to enter anything here. It will be entered by the solver when we solve the problem. So what I said is we have one line for the variables, one line for the objective, coefficients and then the total value and then we will have one line for each constraint. So what are those constraints? Right? The, the names are here and then the, the formulas are here. We have five constraints and the non-negativities. We will not have the non-negativities entered uh, as constraints but a simple uh, restriction on the values of variables. Uh, so here we will have units of model three times and I'm going to put one, two and three. Oops. And then hours of wiring <coughs> and hours of harnessing. Now I'm, I could calculate the units of model 1 just as a formula equals uh, and add M1 and B1, right? But um, that would be correct, that is the left hand side of this constraint. However, what I want to use is I still want to use the sum product formula as I used it in the total cost, right? Uh, what then should I enter in those uh, cells? What parameters? Well, I need to take 1 times M1, so under M1 I'm going to put 1. I need to take 0 times M2, so I could put 0. 0 times M3, right? In this constraint M2 and M3 do not occur, so I have to 
multiply them by 0 and then b1 is again there and b2, b3 are not there. Now for clarity uh, remember if we have empty cells they also are evaluated as zeros in excels in any other spreadsheets so in this case I'm just going to keep them empty they should work exactly the same right for example if I le let's leave them zeros at the moment I will copy the sum product formula here right and I see the sum product is collect correctly now taking the new parameters not cost coefficients but these these constraints coefficients um, and and the variables still variables because we use the dollars the reference was not changed when we copied right and and uh, I, uh, how many units of model one are we making in this solution well we're just you know, sort of making or buying we have just uh, one unit bought no units of model one made so it is correctly calculated as one right and you can see that if I delete those zeros it is still going to be correctly calculated the sum product will just take 0 times 2, 0 times whatever the value here and so on right so now I can enter the same way all the constraints okay I can copy the sum product formula for all of them and then I can enter the parameters for those sum products like for this sum product units of model 2 we should include model 2 made and model 2 bought times 1 1 times m2 and 1 times b2 and here it will be 1 times m3 and 1 times b3 right for hours of wiring what do we use the wiring hours for we we just take 2 times m1 1.5 m2 and 3 times m3 here in the mathematical model and we have no buying variables so we can put zeros or keep them empty here so I will have 2 1.5 and 3 that's for hours of wiring we can see that yes at the moment we're using 3 hours of wiring 1.5 times 2 and hours of harnessing it is also for making we take 1 hour for model 1 2 hours for model 2 and 1 hour for model 3 and you can see hours of harnessing now are correctly calculated as 4 right so so we've we've computed uh, the the left hand sides of the constraints we have the formulas here we have the total objective function value it's a good idea to also put the right hand sides of the constraint all for all except the first line because remember the first line is really the objective we don't have a restriction here we just want to minimize or maximize in this case minimize now <coughs> the right hand sides of the constraint are 3000 2000 900 10,000 and 5,000 right but it's also a good idea to say here well this is really equal and I press enter now and this is equal and I press enter you cannot say equal and press down because you will start going to start writing formulas in Excel right equal um, let me actually center those okay um, and then I will put here less than or equal less than or equal I'm putting this deliberately so that later on when I enter the constraints I do not confuse uh, what the relationship between this and this um, uh, this f value of the formula and this constant value right I want to make have the first three constraints equalities and the remaining two uh, less than or equal now if you look at this this is um, we have actually finished um, entering things in the spreadsheet we just we still need to uh, define the model in the, the Excel add-in solver add-in um, however notice what is the difference between this model uh, and the, the, the previous one right uh, um, uh, in the abstract terms mathematically speaking this is doing exactly the same thing as we did before however the data is organized differently and it is organized um, uh, with a different principle in mind and our first model we organized things uh, in a kind of business mindset we were putting model one in one column units bake bought in, in, in rows right we were organizing things the way um, a, the someone who to whom the application is close would think about the problem right uh, in this case we are we're using more of an approach of an uh, a, an engineer for whom this is just another linear programming problem and he's using all the variables in one 
listing them all in one row and putting all constraints in one row, right? These constraints, notice, are not as clear as in the in the previous model. But for example, here we can clearly see the model is a linear programming model because all the functions here that we use are some products of parameters and variables, right? So here we can, for example, easily verify this is a linear model. There is no nonlinearity just by looking at the functions that are used here. Uh, they are all in one place, not scattered all over the place. I'm showing you this format because uh, in, you see you can you may like the first format or the second format better right it's a personal preference and i'm just showing you this as a choice uh, both of those would be considered correct and i would uh, encourage you to just decide which one you like more or which one you find uh, more uh, easier to to prepare quickly and correctly and just use whichever one you like i will accept both as as solutions right but uh, just be aware of both and be aware of the fact that uh, models in Excel can be organized in a very different way and they, they can still be all correct. So now I still need to go to the solver. So what do we do? We want to specify the objective. We want to say it needs to be minimized. I want to um, I want to say uh, we want to say these are the changing cells, the variables, right? The model, the this Excel solvers should be changing these var values, not anything else. And then we can say the constraints are, and I can add them again in groups, those three values must be equal to those three. I cannot include the remaining ones because the remaining ones are those two must be less than or equal to those two. Right, and then I also need variables to be greater than or equal to zero as it is in the last line of the mathematical model. So I'll click OK here now to say add this but do not add the following constraints. Right? I'm not using the this this checkbox, make unconstrained variables not negative. I'm just ensuring this by a cons constraint and I will select simplex LP uh, as a solving method because this is a linear model, it should work, it should be the most efficient. If everything is entered correctly, I should be able to click Solve now and get the solution. And the solver found the solution, all constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. The message confirms this is a good solution. And if you click OK and look at the solution, you will see we actually have exactly the same solution. We're making everything on model 1, model 3 and only 550 units of model 2 and we're buying the rest. And also in the constraints you will see now clearly we are getting as many units of each model as we need. And the problem was the harnessing restriction was actually the one that limited our ability to make all the units so if we had to buy some, some of them. Okay. That's all in this uh, episode.